Hello YouTube and hello traders. This is Victorio from Trade Pro Academy and in today's video we've got something special for you guys as always and we are going to be talking about multi-time frame analysis and what multi-time frame analysis is the best for swing trading strategies. Now we're going to go through a few swing trading ideas here both by the dip and breakout opportunities and we're going to break down what time frames are best for these. It's going to be a multi-time frame analysis video for our swing traders out there and I hope you guys enjoy. We also have a blog on this so go check that blog out at tradeproacademy.com where you'll find even more information than this video. So I want you guys to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and notify that little bell when we do go live and drop videos like these every week. And I want to just mention we are going to open up the live trading room for YouTube and the public once we hit that 60,000 mark. So I hope everyone's excited for that and help us get there. Enough of this intro, let's dive into this video. We're gonna be talking about the best timeframes for swing trading strategies. So in front of me on the screen, we have Facebook and this is what we're going to use. I've already marked it up a little, but let's go ahead and get ready for this intro and we'll see you guys again. So first, before we dive into what we're going to be talking about, we're going to explain what multi time frame analysis is. Multi time frame analysis or multiple time frame analysis is the practice of using more than one time frame right on your chart, whether it's a daily, weekly, hourly to identify the best trading opportunities you can come by. Now, what you have to know is that every chart is different in terms of time frames. So every candle, depending on the time frame, represents a certain period of time. So right now, if I have a daily chart up, every single candle is going to represent a daily candle. If I have a weekly chart up, every candle is going to represent the weekly candle. So here on TradingView, if I just type in one week, you can see it's explained here at the bottom. I press enter and all of a sudden we have each candle representing a week of time. Now I can do obscure times, six hours. If I type in 6H, I'm going to get six hours. If I type in one and just press enter, it's going to be a one minute. If I type in a hundred minutes, it'll be a hundred minutes, right? So you can do a lot of different things on TradingView with this, uh, with your different time frames, multiple time frame analysis. And it's important to know which time frames you're using for what. So there's specific time frames for day trading. There's specific time frames for swing trading. And we're going to be talking about the swing trading right now mainly. So swing trades, I like to look at the broader picture. Why is that? Because a swing trade by definition is a trade that is held for multiple days over. So that means if it's held for multiple days over, we are going to look at a broader image, right? With that in mind, the larger the time frame that you use, the more of a holding period you're expecting. So for example, if I just use strictly weekly time frames, weekly candles, I'm expecting to hold a stock option or whatever it is for multiple weeks at a time. If I use mainly the daily, which is going to be my number one here, that I'm probably going to look to hold the asset for multiple days at a time. So choosing the correct time frame is super, super important because you will know your holding period based on that and you will understand what you should be looking, how you should be looking at it the best. So for example, if I plan to hold something for multiple days, I'm not going to look at a five minute candle chart right? That's not going to be beneficial for me. If I'm swing trading, I want to make sure that I'm looking at the daily chart first. So now that we've talked about multiple time frame analysis, why we should use it correctly, we're going to talk about two different topics here, which time frames I use to swing trade in a multiple time frame analysis and an example. So why don't we go through this? We're going to ignore all of the indicators for now, right? We'll have another video just for indicators. All we're going to pay attention to is going to be volume and volume profile. So let's leave th everything else out. We're gonna do structure, volume, and volume profile. If you wanna learn more about volume profile, we have multiple videos on that, go check them out. But 
we are going to be talking about my favorite three time frames for a multiple time frame analysis for swing trades. And they are the weekly chart because we can get a huge image of the overall movement and structure. We're going to be talking about the daily as well and then the one hour. So the thing with these three time frames, when you're doing multiple time frame analysis, I do suggest that you focus more on the continuity between each time frame meaning are the trends and the structure between time frames the same as you go along right so i go from the weekly is the weekly really strong in terms of bullish behavior right or bearish behavior then i go to the daily what does the daily tell me about that is the daily really strong in that respect Right? Are we moving up on the daily? Then if I go to the hourly, does the hourly confirm what I've seen in the first two? So with that, I'm going to be able to identify those trade opportunities. So why don't we take a look at our example here with Facebook, and we'll break it down based on all of these time frames. So there are two other things to note, and that is the type of trading strategy that we want to experience, right? Which means, are we going to do pullbacks on swings or are we going to do breakouts? Now, breakouts require a little more risk and it requires traders to find higher moving momentum stocks, but they are great, no doubt, especially if you follow some of these rules, a breakout of a 52-week high or a breakout of an all-time high a breakout of a monthly high or a breakout of a weekly high, right? Those are very good areas to start with if you're using breakout trades. Otherwise, we'll focus on finding bases, right? We can find bases. So if I go to a weekly chart here on Facebook and I'm looking at this thing, and this was a trade that we took a while ago now. Um, this was all the way back in February of this year. So now we're July, the week of July 21st. And this was all the way back in February. So with that being said, what we can do, we can identify that we have falling highs here and we have rising lows, meaning that we're going to create a wedge. Now, this is a very bullish pattern that we expect price to break out of. Now, there's two other things that we should identify, all right? One, you noticed that we probably have two larger green boxes here. Now, what do they indicate? So the bottom box is going to be our base, right? It is the prior top, which was resistance, turned into support. So whenever we get this strong rejection, maybe twice like this, we can identify that this is going to be a strong base area. So from that level, I'm going to be looking to potentially buy this, right? Now, volume is super important. Because we want to make sure that we're buying the base right where we drop off this big volume structure. Because this is expected to hold as support, right? Now, we either have the base and we're watching volume here as we come into these areas, right? Not so much on the weekly, but on the daily as we'll see. And then another thing to note is when we have a wedge, right? Or when we have any kind of descending pattern, we want to identify where the most recent lower high is, which in this case would be where this green box is drawn. And from there, we want to wait for the break of the level and potential pullback for that continuation, right? Because this little tool right here will allow us to comfortably switch structure, right? Now, in this circumstance, we have an area which is a resistance point, kind of the opposite of a base, we'll call it a ceiling, that has been tested multiple times. So this is a big breakout area as well. That's why we've thrown on this big plank here. So now that we've identified a lot of what we need to know on the weekly, we can go to the daily very simply and see if that continuity is there, right? So we can experience this and see, okay, well, now that we're coming into the base, right, this is the pullback trade. If we wanted to wait for the breakout, it would have been up here, the break and retest or the breakout of this big green box. So we'll look at both step by step. Now, if we're looking at this and we're like, okay, well, we have a base right here. So when price enters this base, we want to notice how big the buy volume is in comparison to the sell volume. So let's just zoom in here. Let's zoom in and let's circle this area. 
So the base starts somewhere here and then goes until about here. So these are the volume blocks that we're going to be interested in. Now we compare the red days that are trying to hammer the base lower to the green days. We can all agree that the green buy volume at this base is greater than the volume on these sell candles. The sell candles are big, but the volume on the up days is larger than the down days. Now, don't confuse this volume for sell volume versus buy volume, right? Volume has to exchange hands in order to be complete. So that means that there's equal buyers to equal sellers. However, it just matters that there is large volume versus small volume, meaning on the red days, there are less participants than there are on the green days, which is important because they want to push it up. So now that we've established, okay, this base is going to hold, let's see where we should get in. And then we go to the hourly, right? The hourly is going to help us figure out where we could be getting into this area. So naturally in the hourly, once we form the base, I want to make sure that the test of the green candles into this base area is far greater than the red candles that come into it, right? So right here, we have a pretty large red candle with large cell volume. Here we have a big green candle. We have a very, very big green candle here. And overall, we can agree that the overall volume to the upside on the hourly chart is greater than to the downside attempts. So if we say, you know what, I want to buy it somewhere here at 256, we can say, you know what, my stop is at 244. Right, you can say it's under this, under these rotations of support, but let's say 244 right here, and we can get long, right? 256 to 244, about 12 dollars of risk, right? That means that we're looking for at least 24 dollars of return for a two to one, so that would put us at 280. So now we're moving up. We hit 277 and fail. And then finally, we hit into the 280s. You could be looking to take some profit or trim some. Now, that is the pullback approach where we find the base. Now, the breakout approach, like we mentioned with our idea of when we're looking at structure, we want to make sure that the most recent lower high, right, which is here, sorry, missed it. The most recent lower high is broken, right? That could be the breakout trade. Now, again, you want to look at the breakout trades with volume. The better breakout trades are going to be a new all-time high, right, which we get here, or maybe a 52-week high, or maybe some more of these more exaggerated tops that we saw on the weekly, right? So through this area, through this green box, it's going to be a stronger breakout, but you can see that you are potentially only getting like $15 for a larger risk, right? So that's where the pullback comes into play. You break and retest a prior top. You can see this was the top. You retest it. That's where your longs are for a more conservative entry, conservative approach. But if we look at the breakout, we're doing the same thing. So we want to see, okay, right here is going to be the first breakout point. We'll drop to the hourly chart. When you notice the volume on the hourly chart is pretty weak on the break, you do not want to take it. Instead, we wait for the pullback. What about this break? This break volume eclipses that that we saw in the original break. So yeah, we can take it. So if we get long here, 277, stop under 263, right? Which is $14, that means we're looking for $28, right? $28 of return would get us up to 305. So if we're getting in at that area, we get the first push to 300, and that's not necessarily it. Our stop is all the way down here, right? Once we get this push, we can move our stop over here. So that means we're risking way less. Maybe we take some off, it pulls back. This is the pullback that I was talking about. This is where you want to identify those big buyers are coming in, buy it. And then we finally get our target at 305, right? And then this big breakout happens. Now, that is, the multi time frame analysis in a nutshell. We can also look at different examples. I am a big fan of finding stocks that form large extended bases on their pullback so we can look for a potential rally higher. Now, even on the weekly chart, if we dissect Facebook even further, right? If we come into this and we grab our support resistance area from prior tops, Right, that got broken and got retested. This was the most recent move that we had. 
If we go to the daily chart, you can see the prior tops. Why do we choose this area? Multiple tops rotations. We come back into the area right at 334. We're trading now $10 higher, and we could have done this on less risk. So we have the idea, right? The, the daily candle may have formed, but maybe if we wanted to get in a little eagerly, we go to the hourly and see. Look at this green candle right here. Look at the volume on it. 336. We could be buying at 336, 335 with a short stop, and now look where we are. So it's very, very important on swing trades to be able to identify those base moments. One of my favorite most recent bases that we caught in our live trading room was coin. Look at coin. We uh, On the weekly chart, remember our structure, weekly, daily, hourly. So on our weekly chart, we formed a base that got rejected multiple times, right? So if we draw this base, this next test, we're going to be looking for longs. A nice green day on a decent green candle right where the base is. Let's go to the hourly. Right, the hourly, we're waiting for the first candle to drop into that base. Decent volume. A bit smaller than the red, but we could look and say, you know what? I want to buy it at 215. We buy it at 215, and now we're up about $20 on that move, right? With pretty little risk. So about $8 of risk for a potential $20 return. So remember... Swing trading, multi-time frame analysis. We go weekly, we go daily, we go hourly. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want you guys to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell to make sure that you are notified when we drop videos like these and go live. Remember to check out our blog that we're going to post about this video, and we will check back with you guys next time around for more quality content. So we've got a lot of different things coming out. Um, keep an eye out on that, as always. Appreciate you all and we'll see you guys in the next video.